Okay, the questions I have here are, first question is, um, we should learn to trust God in all our difficulties. Why did God allow us as, he, uh, as His servant to be suppressed? Why does He allow suppression of His servants? Okay, now after Adam and Eve sinned, all people are under some kind of suppression. We all live in difficult situation, uh, including the servants of God and uh, uh, all the believers. And we can see from the Old Testament and New Testament, the servants of God were all persecuted in some ways. They all suffer in some ways. And so today too, we suffer too. Now the victory is not in having no problem. The victory is that we can uh, overcome the problems and have victory have joy and peace that we trust in God only and put down all the burdens all the worries of the world uh, we put them down and then uh, we trust in God that he loves us he cares about us now cares about us doesn't mean uh, that there we have no problem cares about us means he is supporting us he gives us strength he guides us with the Holy Spirit he uh, he changes our life and gives us strength. So that's his, his support and his su support, his help, his strength is sufficient for us to have victory. That our victory is not having no problem. So that is very important concept because many Christians pray to God and then they, they said that, well, I have my problem, I ask God to help me and God never helped me. And they think of the help as having no problems. That is not what the Bible talks about having no problem. Like Joseph, he was, uh, Joseph, he was, you know, he suffered much under his uh, uh, brothers, but he still trusts in God and then he had victory uh, even though he was persecuted by his brothers. So that is our victory. So we need, to, we need to understand what is the help of God and what is the victory in Christ, and suppression is part of our life is part of our life now and uh, so as Christians our victory is that we put down our burdens don't worry about the the, uh, the people uh, how they are mistreating us and also put down the problems that we don't think that the problems are you know can uh, take away our blessings the problems can never take away the blessings so the trust of Christians is to trust in God in the face of all difficulties to have victory in all situations okay okay another question suppose that you think negative always can you still be blessed um, God still bless those who are negative because God helps them God gives them strength but what they receive from God is very little that we can see people who are negative, they don't have much joy, they don't have much strength because they, when they pray, they're not open. When they pray, they, they are doubting God, they are complaining. So they don't have much strength and they don't have much blessings because they are complaining and they don't have good relationship with people. They have problematic relationship, they have problematic uh, marriage, uh, they're in the ministry they have problems so they they suffer in all areas so when we are negative we suffer in all our areas God still has blessed them in many ways God God has blessed them in many ways helped them in many ways but because of the negative thinking they only receive a small portion of God's help without God's help they would have fallen and turned away from God but they still are saved uh, for those who are saved but they suffer a lot so when we are negative the one who suffer is us and also the people who are affected by the neck by by us if we are negative okay second question uh, can people who have bad motives be a leader for me I don't want to see that happen. I don't want to see people who have bad motives to be a leader because 
he would do bad things to the uh, the church to the Christians because what he says what he does will hurt other people and it doesn't glorify God so it's very important for all Christians and all leaders especially leaders must have a pure motive and when they have a pure motive to to worship God to glorify God and to bless people then they themselves themselves will be blessed by God God is pleased with them and God will bless them but it's a fact that there are many leaders who have bad motives they want money they want to take advantage of people they want to give people pressure they want to have more power uh, they want to be famous they just want their own thing and then a lot of what they do is in vain even though they have brought people to Christ but God is not pleased with them so they it's like in 1st Corinthians chapter 3 they would be uh, uh, the, what they do a lot of it could be burned burned away and they don't receive uh, much reward from the Lord and they will be damaging other Christians so I uh, I suggest that it's very important that we raise up people to serve God. We help them to overcome the problems in their life that they learn to be uh, positive people, always blessing people and trusting in God all the time. Okay, and then if you have a good way and people don't love you, what can you do? So I guess what he meant is that if we are behaving well, if we have positive thinking and positive emotions but the people around us don't love us what can we do okay that happens to us all the time then we say it's their problem so we need to say no to negative influences it's their problem I I still want to bless them I want to forgive them bless them but I don't want to be affected by them I don't want to eat the garbage if they say negative words to me I understand that there are people who are negative I don't take the negative words I would just neglect what they say but I would try to respond to them and guide them and not to be affected by them if I'm if I'm affected by them then I would be I would lose my joy and my strength if I don't have joy then I don't have strength and I would serving under pressure I don't want to be serving God like that and Jesus said you know I am gentle and meek take my yoke and learn from me and then you will uh, experience uh, peace in your heart in your spirit for my yoke is easy and my burden is light that Jesus wants us to take a light burden because he will take care of everything if we trust in God if we have a good relationship with God God will take care of everything so we need to learn to say that if I follow God totally and not to be affected by people we are blessed by God and that is the only way we can influence the negative people for instance many parents they have very uh, negative children and then they become very angry they yell at the children and the children won't change but if the parents have joy from the Lord and peace from the Lord and don't take their negative things and but be con continue to be nice to them to them and guide them to change gradually the children can change now if they don't change then it's their problem we want to guide people instead of forcing people to change instead of yelling at them we can say okay God loves you you're important and I love you I care about you and do you love yourself do you want yourself to go higher that you are blessed by God if he wants to then you say what can you do what can you do to be blessed by God do you want to be blessed by, by God if you want to be blessed by, by God so what can you change in your behavior so that way is guiding people but a lot of people they scream at the ch at the children and they say you're no good you're terrible and they yell at them and uh, and do negative things to them and then what happened is the children become more negative so if we want to change people we must learn to be positive ourselves and to be more peaceful and then there's a chance to change people but there's a lie many people believe is that when people are not good then we have to yell at them they think that yelling at people be angry with being angry with people would change people 
it won't change people it would just uh, it will make them become more negative so yelling at children is not going to help but we talk to them listen to them listen to the problems and then guide them to see the problem guide them to see the goodness of God and God loves you and I love you do you want to your life to be blessed and then we if we live in a positive way then our positive way will influence them if they see that we have joy and strength and uh, peace and are not affected by them they they have a, a better chance to, uh, to learn from us okay so we learn not to be affected by people and continue to bless people and then how does one serve God with secret motives now people with secret motives um, I mean uh, impure motives even if they do external things, God is not pleased with them. It's like Jesus said in Matthew seven twenty one to 23 that on that day there will be many who say to him, Have not prophesied, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons and perform miracles? And Jesus said, Surely I tell you, I don't know you. That if people have wrong motives altogether, their life have problems, serious problems, that they don't repent of. The most serious consequence is that God, they don't have a relationship with God, that they're not saved. And then the last, next level is that they are saved, but what they do is in vain. And then the next level is that they uh, only a part of what they do is uh, remembered by God and rewarded by God. And then they also are serving God with difficulty. They're suffering in the ministry. So if we and trust our ministry to God. God is responsible for the ministry. It's God's ministry. It's not our ministry. I'm just a steward. I just, and I'm just entrusted by God to take care of the ministry. But it's God's ministry. And then I can relax and I can let God work in uh, among His people. When I'm full of joy, full of peace, and I have no burdens, then people can see that God is alive in me that I have joy and peace and wisdom of God and then people will be more motivated to change. So I hope we all become leaders that people can see Jesus' life in our heart and then they are motivated to change by us. Okay, and then how to handle negative... Oh, I'm sorry, that, that is the last question, okay? And so, uh, so, uh, okay, now, if you have any more questions, you can send it to me. And then now, what we're going to do is go through some of the questions quickly, not, not in detail, about how to handle uh, negative thinking and emotions. Um, okay, Proverbs 4.23, uh, guard your heart above all things. So how do our thoughts and emotions affect our lives? It will affect everything, it affect our thinking, our way of speech, what we say, how we act, how we relate to people, how uh, the fruit of our life, the fruit of our ministry is all affected by our negative our thinking and emotions. So we must understand <coughs> that, <coughs> that our thinking and emotions affect our whole life, affect everything in our life. So we need to learn this. Okay, and then number two here, Proverbs seventeen twenty-two, a cheerful heart is good medicine. So how does a crushed spirit affect? How does a crushed spirit affect the whole person? So how does joy help us? It affects, a crushed spirit will affect the physical health, affect the emotions, affect, affect the thinking, affect the way we sleep, the way we believe, behave, everything. It will affect us from the inside to the outside. So our thinking and our emotions will affect the whole person. So what are some excuses that people have, negative thinking and feelings, how can we show that these excuses are not right? that some excuses are when people are not nice to me then I have to be angry when people do something wrong I have to yell at them when uh, conditions is not 
uh, are not good, then I have to be unhappy. So these are excuses. And then uh, that these excuses are not right because like Joseph, he rejoiced, he trusts in God even when his brothers, now at first when he was sold to Egypt, he would not be happy, but he continued trusting God and God gave him strength and wisdom. So it, it doesn't, it has to take time to learn to handle the problem. And uh, so, but he eventually learned that. And then Paul also, Paul also, he learned to trust in God even in difficulties. Uh, did Paul get emotional when he was ex persecuted? Uh, no, he, even though he, when he was put in prison, he still rejoiced in the Lord and praised the Lord. Emotions serve what purpose for us? Emotions are like a warning. When we have difficulties, our emotions will tell us something is wrong. We feel unhappy. When someone yells at us, we feel unhappy. But then, uh, when we are, when, uh, So uh, when, when we feel unhappy, they tell us that we need to handle the emotion. So the emotions serve as a, a, a purpose to tell us that something is wrong, that we have to do something to correct the problem and to handle our emotions. So please ex explain the vicious cycle of emotions. So when we have negative emotions, it affects our thinking, it affects our way of behaving, behavior, our behavior and our relationship with people, how we handle problem, it and it affects everything. It will go worse and worse. When a person has uh, negative emotions, he has problem handling problems. He has problem relating to people. He has problem serving God. And so everything will go worse and worse. So this is a vicious cycle. What actions are detrimental when we are emotional? When we are emotional and then some people may yell at people and make wrong decisions and uh, uh, or run away from what they are doing. So these actions, because people are emotional and then they will do s terrible thing. Number eight, when we have negative emotions, what are some things we can do to help ourselves? We can relax, we can pray, we can take deep breaths, we can drink some water, we can take a nap, we can have some exercise. Uh, uh, we can talk to someone who is mature to listen to us and comfort us and accept us. Uh, but not gossiping. It's not gossiping. It's someone who can accept us and say, I know you feel very unhappy. I know it's difficult for you and I empathize with you and I know that you are suffering. So when someone knows that we are suffering, it, it gives us support. Uh, Please explain the ABC model of handling emotions. So A, activating event, B, beliefs, C, consequence. So when people have negative beliefs, even when people do good things to them, even when people help them, they will say, you help me for a reason, for a hidden reason. You want to make use of me. And then they have the negative thinking and then they would doubt people and then they will feel unhappy. And then when they have negative thinking and people are, uh, are, are treating them uh, in bad ways, then they would be more angry and they are f more frustrated. But then when a person has positive beliefs, then he'll say, well, it's his problem. He's angry with me, it's his problem. Uh, if I have nothing wrong, if I have done something wrong, I'll apologize and I will try to make up. But if I have done nothing wrong and he is accusing me, he's unhappy with me, he's angry with me, then it's his problem and God still loves me and I'm important, then the consequence is that we'll feel uh, be more peaceful and more uh, have strength to face our problem. So it's very important for us to learn this. Let me tell you, just hearing this lesson doesn't mean we learn this. I have learned to take care of my emotions for many years, for many, many years. Uh, I have done it for decades and now I am very uh, sensitive. I, I, sensitive in a sense, I, I know when I'm affected by emotions. I, I sense the presence of negative emotions and I, immediately I would take care of my negative emotions.
okay and then please apply the five steps of victory to managing negative thinking and emotions the five steps are aware destructive Bible pray and obey so we like if we find that we are unhappy we are affected by some people then we say I'm aware I'm affected by someone and I know if I'm affected by someone is destructive to my my feeling to my life to my ministry so I, I want to manage it and then Bible tells us to have joy from the Lord and and I pray for forgiveness and strength and then I obey by choosing positive thinking we need to choose positive thinking before we can have positive emotions for instance someone hurt us we have to manage the thinking and say it doesn't matter even if he abused me if he take advantage of me if I let go I forget about it it doesn't continue to affect me but if we continue to think about it we'll continue to be affected by him then that person continue to steal from us what he has done will continue to hurt us then that is managing the problem managing our thinking first we manage the thinking and then we can manage the emotions when we say that okay what he does doesn't matter this is very very important God is blessing me God is helping me God loves me and I'm very precious and important and what people does to me do to me doesn't matter and then I let go and then and then I rejoice in the Lord hallelujah God is blessing me in many ways God is helping me God is doing good things in my life then we will not be affected uh, then gradually we have more and more positive emotions so what are some positive thinking that the Bible teaches us some positive thinking are God loves us God cares about us we are precious we can do great things for God and God is very happy when we do anything for him and God is very happy when we repent when we trust in him and obey him and God is very happy when we uh, treat our enemies nicely that when we love them and forgive them so these are positive thinking and and we can rejoice in the Lord and our life lives are precious we are precious so we can have healthy self-image okay and then number 12 Habakkuk that he everything goes wrong with his uh, w with his work but then he still rejoices in the Lord how can Habakkuk rejoice in the midst of difficulties how do we explain his mentality with the ABC theory how can we apply this to our lives so how can he rejoice because he has seen the grace of God the love of God the forgiveness of God the salvation of God he has seen God's work in his life so he remember all this so even when he's facing difficulties he remembers that God is good to him so he is not affected by the negative things so we all are living in a negative world but we learn that we have observed that God has helped us in many ways God has given us peace the Holy Spirit has worked in our life God has give us, given us his love and forgive us and change our life and God continue to talk to us to guide us all these are the the work of God and so we even when we face difficulties I know that God is helping me so I can put down the problems so Habakkuk learned to put down the problems and look at the blessings of God and so he can rejoice in the Lord and that's same for Joseph and Paul that they face difficulties but they continue to rejoice in the Lord so uh, how do we explain this mentality with the ABC theory so they have positive thinking when they have the activating event the positive thinking so they have see the consequence is more peace and joy and strength and how can we apply this to our lives that we need to learn the five steps of victory learn to be aware that we are not happy now even now maybe something is affecting you then you think of what is affecting us and then number two this is destructive so we believe that even though someone mistreats us when we are angry it's destructive and then what does the Bible say the Bible says uh, forgive people and uh, what can mere mortals do to me uh, that uh, people cannot take away from us the blessings of God and then pray for strength and forgiveness Lord you love me and when we pray it's more important to build up 
our relationship with God. God is blessing me. God is loving me. God is with me. God cares about me. God is with me all the time. So we declare the love of God and enjoy God and, and praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then gradually we have more peace and more joy. And then the more we do it, the better we can do it. So this takes a lot of practice. And the underlying value is that we believe that in difficulties, God is still loving us. That is most important. If Christians don't believe that God is loving them, and some Christians even think that God is uh, mistreating them, God is uh, hurting them, then they will not be able to have strength from the Lord. Then they will be saying, God is uh, uh, not loving me, God is hurting me. But God is the one who helps us. It's the world that is hurting us. And the world is under sin. That's why we are all suffering right now. Okay, Psalm 77, 3 talks about a psalmist uh, in difficulties that he was unhappy even when we remember God. And then he remembered the good things of God. Explain how the psalmist manages emotions with the ABC theory. How do we apply it? to us when we have negative emotions. So when he realized that he has negative emotions, he think about the good things God has done in the past. When he thought about the good things God has done in the past, then he has more strength. So we need to think and remember the good things God has done in our lives. Now I remember many good things God has done in my, in my life. There are a few times that I you know, almost have serious accident and God saved me in the last moment that to let me know that God is uh, saving me, God is with me. And there are times that I could be seriously hurt. And I, two times I fell on my head, I could be seriously injured. But God protected me that nothing happened, nothing, no damage at all. So I have different situations and there are people who who try to, you know, they suppress me and hurt me. But I learn in the process, I learn to trust in God more and learn to overcome what they do by pe being peaceful uh, in the Lord, trusting in God and forgiving them and blessing them. That's very important to forgive them and bless them. So God's way is the best way that we forgive people and don't be affected by them. And then 1 Peter 2 9 that we are chosen generation of royal priesthood. How do we apply this verse and the ABC theory to build up our self-image? That because we are chosen by God, a holy nation, royal priesthood, his special people. So we are very special. Even though we might not have much education, we might not have many talents, but we say and when I trust in God, God can do wonderful things. There are many people who don't have much education and don't have much talents, many talents and they don't have much money and when they trust in God, God can use them greatly. So God is a God who can raise up weak people to be strong. He can raise up people who can do, you know, naturally they cannot do much but God can use them to do great things. So if someone is having negative thoughts, how can he change to have positive thoughts? You need to read the Bible and believe the Bible and apply it. Every time when he sees that what the Bible promised is true, then he needs to remember God is following his promises. So if we, we experience the move of the Holy Spirit, God is working in our lives that according to uh, the Bible, you know, to uh, that what the Bible says that the Holy Spirit comes to convict us of our sin, of righteousness and of judgment. So it shows that the Holy Spirit is working on us. And, and when the Holy Spirit works in us, He moves in our heart with love and peace to change our heart. So God has love for us. When the Holy Spirit moves in our heart to convict us of our sin, the Holy Spirit doesn't yell at us. He moves in us gently to guide us to repentance. And how God protects us and raises us up and use us in different ways that we have helped people. Now, sometimes we have helped many people, but there are people whom we find it hard to help. Then we look at the people we have helped. We look at the people we have helped, and then we say, God is using me to help people. 
Okay, and then Psalm 16, 8, I've set the Lord always before me, and then, then my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices, and my flesh also will rest in hope. How does having a close relationship with God do to our emotions? How can we get joy and comfort to the body when we pray? So, close relationship with God, because God is a peaceful God. God is a God of love and joy and peace. So when we come close to Him, His love and joy and peace will come and heal us and give us more peace. So we find that when we praise God, we have more peace. And then how can we get joy and comfort to the body when we pray? We can learn to relax when we pray. Don't be tense and just relax and Lord, the Lord is loving me and we stand and we can feel the sway of the Holy Spirit. We can feel our body swaying. That is from the Holy Spirit. And then it will bring comfort to us and healing to us. Okay, 17, uh, Isaiah 61, 1 to 3. How does God heal the brokenhearted and comfort those who mourn? God can do wonderful things when we pray to Him or if someone prays for us that we can experience his peace and love and it will uh, take away our burdens and our, uh, our hurt feelings from the past and the more we meditate on God's love and think about the past event and let God heal us so we can think of God was present even when we were uh, suffering then you might say why didn't God take us away from the suffering because that's something everyone has to face. Everyone has to face suffering. So if God has to take away from the situation, from all difficult situations, He has to take us away from the world. But we still are living in the world. So we, so we, uh, you know, we always have difficulties. But in the difficulties, God has a plan to heal us. So we want to believe that uh, God will heal us. Okay, and then Hebrews, 416 that we can come boldly to the throne of grace to find grace so how does this principle help us to overcome our negative thinking emotions now many people think that when they are negative then uh, is nothing to uh, there's nothing we can do to change but then the Bible tells us that we can come to him for help so we can come to him and believe that he will help us and there are many people who share this when they come to God for help God works in miracle ways to help them okay what does it mean that people's negative words are garbage that means in a sense that it will affect our thinking and emotions it will ruin our life so we don't let the negative words stay in our heart we don't want to chew on it we want to forget about it we want to think about God's wonderful blessings and grace we want to think about God's goodness instead of uh, thinking about people's negative words so what are some motivations for us to manage our thinking and emotions? The motivations are first, God loves me and I'm special, I'm precious and negative thinking uh, will and negative emotions will destroy my life and positive thinking and emotions will bless my life and so I want to uh, manage my thinking and emotions and manage my whole life. When I follow God and obey God, my whole life will be blessed. 21. Before we can help a problematic person, why is it important that we are not affected by them emotionally? Because if we are affected by them emotionally, then we will speak angrily to them, then we will show anger, and it's not going to help the situation, it's going to make it worse. So when we are helping someone who has committed a sin, we must calm ourselves down in the peace of the Lord, to have peace of God, and then we can uh, uh, talk to them peacefully and with love and acceptance just as how God accepts us we accept them so that they feel accepted and loved before we can help them okay and then satisfy us early uh, with your mercy that we will rejoice and be glad all our days how can we be joyful all the days we need the love of God the mercy of God so that's why I always talk about living in the love of God. The love of God is the motivation. The grace of God is the motivation. The law is what we obey. The love of God, the grace of God motivate us to obey the law. We should not use the law as the mo main motivation. If we use the law as the main motivation, it's telling us you have to do with this, you have to obey. But instead we say God has all kinds of blessings 
And when I follow him and obey him, he's very happy with me and he will bless my life and raise up my life to a higher level. And so I'm motivated to, uh, to be blessed by God. I want to go to a higher level in God. Uh, so that motivates us. The love of God motivates us to, uh, to serve God instead of the law of God. The law of God just tells us what to do. But the law of God is also gives us negative reminders, warning that if we continue sin, it can affect our life. It can bring destruction. How can we set aside, satisfy ourselves with God's mercy? So we think of God's love and mercies all the time. We think of what God has done uh, in our lives and think of what God has done in nature, to our bodies, to our ministry, to the people around us. We think of all the good things of God and then, then we will be more satisfied and happy with the positive things of God.